Coach, talk about a roller coaster ride. The uh, game against Timbers 2 saw six second half goals. Ups, downs, we're ahead, we're behind, we're even. Tell me what's going through your mind that second 45 minutes. Well, just, you know, prior to the second 45, I thought that we had a great end to the first half. I didn't want the first half to end. You know, I felt like the momentum was going our way. Um, going to the locker room, the players felt that way. And then when we came out, sometimes you never know where you're going to, what, what starting point you're going to be at whenever you have the, the break in between first and second half. And they continued to stay in form and stay focused and, and really try to go and, and grab the game. And we did. First 10 minutes are incredible and take a 2 0 lead. And actually, the, the time period after that, there's you know a good 10 minutes prior to Portland getting the first goal. Um, where I felt like we had things under control and there wasn't a lot in the game from their end. But, you know, once Portland turned it over and made it 2-1 at that point, uh, all of a sudden we're down 3-2 before we can blink. And all that said, the emotions of the game going, like you said, highs of taking the 2-0 lead and then the lows of going down 3-2 and how it ended and how it was capped off. Uh, what, what a phenomenal finish and what an entertaining finish albeit I wish uh, the entertainment was probably less on the night from the standpoint of us taking three points. But I'm, I'm glad to see the character of the group continue to show through for us to get a point out of the game after going down 3-2. Kevon Frader been a weapon all season long, but it's safe to say that on Friday night he kind of took it to a, to another level. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think was, was, was sort of the cause of that, and, and did you expect it? His training habits. His training habits over the last, you know, two and a half, three weeks has been uh, fantastic. And I think that he, he had a little bit of an injury um, going into RGV where it kept him out for about a week, roughly. And since that time, I feel like he's been extremely focused, been healthy for the most part, and been, been overly focused on trying to just improve his impact in the team. And, and I wasn't surprised necessarily – uh, that he scored goals on the night was as surprised as a, at, a, at a hat trick. That's always something that's somewhat surprising. It's difficult to do, but I think he earned it. You know, it's not something that he deserved. He, he went and he earned uh, the three goals that he scored on the night. Uh, perhaps lost in, in all of the last minute heroics and the, and the freighter wonder strike was just some really outstanding play in, in the central pitch, mm -hmm. as, whether that be the central midfielders, whether that be the back line. Who sort of stood out in your mind as, as really stand out on that, that evening? Well, those, those four players, field players in the middle of the field, were, were excellent on the night. And, you know, Sam Hamilton comes back in the mix after playing some minutes in, in Reno at the, at the number six position, but going back into that center back role that we think that he'll play throughout the rest of the year. I thought he did well to come back into that mold. Justin Schmidt has just been rock solid all year, and he's somebody that anchors our defense, and it's just such a presence. And then, you know, Juan and Salih, I thought, were excellent on the night. Very, very good on both sides of the ball. They, they broke things up. They worked well together to try to limit chances for Portland. And then in possession, you know, I thought, I thought that Salih made some excellent passes penetrating. But then Juan, Juan really, I thought it was his best game in terms of controlling the tempo. And going back a step, you know, besides the field players that I referenced earlier, what can you say about Cody Mizell? I, I think the two saves, I think he deserves – he deserves more on the night than giving up three crazy goals like that in such a short period of time. Um, I, I thought he was fantastic, and he's been fantastic for us all year. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, to give up a, a floater off balance on the jump and then that just strange deflection and then a penalty kick. I sure. mean, you can't really get a worse yeah. trifecta of goals. G great, great header, you know, great header on the set piece, but it's disappointing because it comes after two incredible saves. And like you said, the second one, I've never seen anything like that before, but it happened. And then the third's a penalty. So it's, again, very, very uh, unjust, but that, that's, that's the game sometimes. So we remain undefeated at the lab, and it's cliche to call your crowd a 12th man. But I think really when you look at the atmosphere and you look what, what this fan base is bringing, it's, it's appropriate in this situation. What's your, what's your assessment of the Black and Yellow Faithful so far? The assessment's simple. They're the best fans in the USL. And... The, the momentum that we feel when we play at home is, is something that, that I don't think anybody in our team has ever, ever experienced. I've never coached on a team in any capacity that just has that amount uh, of fans that are behind you the entire time. And again, whether we're up 2-0 or we're down 3-2, every single person in that stadium is behind us and pushing us on. And I think that's why you see us continue to, when we're up 2-0, we're looking for the third. And then when we're behind 3-2, obviously the game calls for it that we try to go find the game tying goal. But the reaction when we go 3-3 three, three is, uh, it's, it's uh, we were talking about this before the interview, but it's Premier League, yes. I mean, it, it was insanely loud. 
and you know I'm just so excited to get back in front of them this weekend again. Yep, and speaking of this weekend, we have San Antonio up next. I'm sure you've been scouting. Um, what have you seen from Darren Powell's squad, and what should uh, what should the fans be watching for? Well, for a Darren's someone that I've uh, been around a long time in my coaching career, so I, I was actually a player at the College of Charleston, and he was assistant coach at UNC Greensboro, and and then he was the head coach at Elon uh, University, and I was an assistant at the College of Charleston. And you know, we did, our paths have crossed so many times throughout our, our careers, and he's someone that I've always had a ton of respect for. So he's, he's someone that always gets the most out of his teams. His teams are incredibly organized. And then the San Antonio team, I mean, they have some very, very dangerous weapons, particularly in transition. So I, I think it's gonna be an entertaining night on, on Sunday. It's gonna be a great atmosphere, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Darren and, and uh, a, a very, uh, again, entertaining and competitive match. All right, Coach, we'll be, uh, we'll be rooting for you as always. Good Thank luck. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.